We'll call the council meeting to order of June 14th. Shivers? Yes. Williams? Yes. Miller? Yes. Hay? Yes. Riggs? Yes. First item is the approval of the minutes of May 24th. <coughs> have a motion. I move we approve the minutes of May 24th, 2021. Second. Shivers? Yes. Williams? Abstain. Hay? Yes. Miller? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Next item, new business ordinance uh, and ordinance amending certain sections of Chapter 42 Zoning of the Code of the City of Mexico, Missouri. Two readings by title only and passage. Mr. Schlegel. Yes, Your Honor. This is uh, ordinance is all about clarification within the zoning code. Um, as the uh, regulations are established to preserve the integrity and of uh, the existing character of the neighborhoods and uh, um, we've had some questions come up regarding what some things mean or don't mean and we've you know, always had certain opinions regarding exactly what they say but not always could be as clear and so this is as much about clarification and identifying so that there isn't misunderstanding going forward and uh, to cover the details of the ordinance change, uh, Rita Jackson. Good evening, Council. Mm -hmm. As Mr. Slagle has indicated, we are requesting to amend certain sections of Chapter 42 zoning as a clarification to some of our codes. Basically, we're gonna look at three areas of section 42, which uh, the first one would be non-conforming buildings, the second would be shipping containers, and the third, square footage of accessory structures. And we would like to start by adding a section 42, in our section 42.1, which already exists, we would like to add the definition of non-conforming building. We have always used the term of non-conforming use, but that non-conforming use is more pertains to the land. But we need a clarification as non-conforming building. Non-conforming building means a building or a portion thereof which does not conform to the height and area requirements of the district in which it is situated. And under that definition section, we would also like to add shipping container storage units, I'm sorry, shipping container storage units, AKA shipping containers, means an intermodal freight container or large container in whole or in part designed and manufactured for the reusable storage and transportation of materials and products. The term shipping containers shall also include the box portion, whether on or off of axle, of a truck designed for hauling freight. Section 4227, building construction types. This is a new section added to the code to help clarify neighborhoods and to be consistent um, with the integrity of neighborhoods and clarification for some of the previous codes. And basically the purpose of these regulations is to establish a relationship within zoning districts between buildings, structures, land uses, and to set the criteria for regulating building construction types and uses. Further, the purpose of these regulations is to A, maintain district integrity and preserve the existing character of the district by requiring comparable building construction and building design, main or accessory, for their intended specific use within an established district. B, maintain districts with compatible land uses for their intended specific use within an established district. C, provide residents the opportunity to use their property to enhance or fulfill personal objectives as long as the use of the property is not incompatible with the building, land, or use of the character of the neighborhood. 
Section 5242579, which is a section that's already height and area table, which is already in the code. But as you look at your document, what has been added is what is underlined. So section eight basically says the minimum square footage of living space for a single family and two family dwelling shall be determined, determined by the average square footage of living space of the existing dwellings located on each side of the street where the new dwelling is to be constructed provided that no dwelling constructed in a residential district and residential district is underlined, which basically there was just R1. This now includes R1, 2, 3, and 3A. Just to clarify that, that it included all the residential districts. Furthermore, the living space of a dwelling shall be equal to or greater than attached garage or storage space. So basically just maintain the balance of the residential area. We do not, it, basically that says that you cannot have a dwelling space where the, your accessory building should not be larger than the main building. Number nine and 10 would be the maximum square footage and height of any residential accessory building shall not exceed the footprint of the main building. Number 10, additions or alterations to a non-conforming building shall be in compliance with the height and area requirements of the district in which it is situated in. Basically, any additions or alterations in a non-conforming building, basically, uh, if you, previously you were not allowed to make those additions, but if you do uh, make those additions, you would have to keep them, bring them into, you can make those as long as they meet the requirements of the, uh, new, the addition that they're actually in. Section 42.622, Accessory Buildings. Shipping container storage units may not be used as accessory buildings in residential districts, but may be considered in commercial and industrial districts upon the issuance of an additional use permit. So basically, they could be in commercial and industrial districts, but you would have to apply for an additional use permit, which goes through the Planning and Zoning Commission. Alf, residential accessory buildings on single or multiple but conti contiguous lots shall be limited to two. So basically, whether the your lot that your house sets on, and then if you have the lot next uh, adjacent to that, you can only have two accessory buildings on those lots, although you own both. Section 42678, additional building and uses authorized upon permit obtained generally. 15, shipping container storage units. That would actually take it under the additional use permit section of our code and add as shipping containers and storage units as part of the additional use permits. Planning and zoning reviewed the uh, amendments at the June 8th meeting and recommended approval to City Council to grant approval of the previous amendments that we just had talked about. Staff recommends that uh, Council proceed with two readings by title only and passage of the attached ordinance. We do have one of our inspectors in the audience, Gary Donovan. Do you have other questions or anything that pertains to the amendments? Questions? Why 600 square feet for a living space? That's the minimum square foot of a house that, uh, based on code, that you can have. A house can be more than 600 square feet, but. So what's the, um, what's the reason for not having an accessory building that's bigger than your main house? I mean, someone buys an old house on a lot and decides to build a garage behind there. Old house is not as big. What's 
was our big problem with having a garage or an accessory building that's more square footage than the house is. Or big that would be one of the things that would it takes away the integrity, integrity of the neighborhood because you would have a storage unit bigger than the living space than uh, you're actually uh, living in. Sometimes just a bigger unit like that also, Steve, is, is taller than the yeah. house. It becomes almost a primary structure when you look at the property yeah. instead of the house, which is supposed to be the primary focal point. An accessory structure would be identified as a secondary structure, and if it becomes bigger, then it's not accessory anymore. <laughs> Do we already have, don't we, are there some places in town that I see big buildings and they're bigger, bigger than the homes? Is that not the case in Mexico? We do have some. Uh, amending these codes will not fix that, uh, but moving forward it would uh, actually take care of, uh, we do have a few in the city of Mexico. So that would, but the, but the, it sounds to me like it's the shipping containers that they're kind of a new item. That, that's that, one part of it, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, the shipping containers weren't really made to be structures anyway. Some of the larger structures that you're seeing out there, uh, they could have been grandfathered in, they could have been prior to, uh, you know, zoning and just different things because there are some houses out there that are smaller than when the When brought to planning and zoning, uh, they discussed all of this, right? Yes. And uh, uh, were there, and I don't, I'm reading in the, men, the planning and zoning minutes, were there any, any objections or discussion about that specifically, or anybody about, about the planning and zoning? No, it was a unanimous decision uh, with the planning and zoning commission. Any public comment at planning and zoning? There were no public um, okay. comments. There was no public available. It was an advertised public meeting, but no public there. A lot of this is for clarification because we've had an opinion interpretation before that about what is a building or isn't a building and so on. This just specifically clarifies. So there, it, it takes out the opinion, it's very clear. Right, there's some issues. So you, it's to clarify some things that you already think are actually covered by the... Yes, to, okay. because your building codes are you know based on the... It's really what you can do, what you cannot do, and it's a clarification based on interpretations by your building inspectors. So we just would like to clarify some of our existing codes to make them more user friendly. Okay. Instead of a storage building being greater than the main, main structure, structure. Mm -hmm. is one of the things that being discussed. I mean, if you have a thousand square foot house, you put up a three thousand foot storage building. It's possible that buildings would stand up over your ex main building to the other, sky. Uh, usage then mm -hmm. storage for a thousand foot. House. How should this motion be read? Just as it is. Yeah, just like it is. It's right here. Mm -hmm. No, we just moved it right here. Right here. I'm just saying. Can we move? We move okay. It to um, make a motion to read bill number 2021-41. Okay. Two seconds. Shippers? Yes. Williams? Yes. Miller? Yes. Hay? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Bill number 2020-41, ordinance amending certain sections of Chapter 42, Zoning of the Code of the City of Mexico, Missouri. I move for second reading. Bill number 2021-41. Second. Shivers? Yes. Williams? Yes. Miller? Yes. Hay? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Bill number 2020-41, ordinance amending certain sections of Chapter 42, Zoning of the Code of the City of Mexico, Missouri. I move for passage of Bill number 2020-41. Second. Yes. Williams? Yes. Miller? Yes. Hay? No. Briggs? Yes. Next item is new business, bill number 2021-42, a resolution authorizing the city manager to sign a task order number two with plan B development for sidewalk repair at 221 North Jefferson, reading by title only and passage. Mr. 
like yes your honor this is to uh, replace the downtown sidewalk this is a program that uh, um, we have done with others in the district we hope to get more sidewalks replaced in the in the downtown this is a public private partnership a cost share program and to cover the details of this particular project Kenzie Russell Council may recall that uh, a little over a year ago we passed a sidewalk transition plan and in that plan we focused on prioritizing uh, the uh, sidewalks that needed to meet the Americans with Disability Act. Uh, those priorities included our major streets but also our downtown area and uh, through the program Mr. Slagle mentioned uh, we've been able to do some of that work. Uh, we've budgeted funds for sidewalk replacements each year uh, so this does come from a line a budgeted line item there's currently thirty one thousand three hundred and eighty one dollars in that line item the cost from our on-call contractor is eleven thousand seven hundred the city's share would be fifty percent of that or five thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars uh, the staff recommends that the council proceed uh, with reading and passage of the resolution that would authorize uh, this task order with our on-call contractor. I move for uh, uh, first reading of bill or reading of bill number 2021-42. Second. Shivers. Yes. Williams. Yes. Miller. Abstain. Hey. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Bill number 2021-42, resolution authorizing the city manager to sign a task order. Uh, task order number two with plan B development for sidewalk repair at 221 North Jefferson. Uh, I move for passage. Second. Sugars. Yes. Williams. Yes. Miller. Abstain. Hey. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Bill number 2021-43 resolution authorizes the city manager execute a proposal from GO Technology Incorporated to complete the Mo Department of Natural Resources Brownfields Voluntary Cleanup Program at 600 Green Boulevard. Mr. Slagle. Yes, Your Honor. This, again, is a, as in the title, it's a voluntary program. <laughs> this program was initially started, and, the, and we're talking about the AP Green property. And we want to be clear what we're dealing with. Um, when Shamrock owned the property, they started this process, and they're the ones that put the wells and everything else in, and so they have went through a good share of the program already and they, it was at their cost doing it as far as installing the wells monitoring and everything we are now at the point that we can pick up where they left off at and finish the program and um, they have expended most of the cost um, in this process and uh, so we wanted to make sure that we understand that we, it, it is a continuation program that will benefit us and I think the the important part of this that uh, uh, Russell will cover is that uh, uh, as it relates to the ongoing issues out there this then gets us that certificate of completion which is uh, along with no further action required so it certifies the site necessary to be cleaned and, and so we can move it on and sell it and all those kinds of things so it is kind of an important step uh, in this uh, in the future processes so having that said I'll turn to Russell runs to cover the details of the agreement and uh, what's being proposed. Good evening, Council. Yeah, as uh, as Bruce mentioned, we're, we're talking about the old AP Green site that had been there uh, on that location since 1908. Uh, the site is approximately 104 acres. Um, Geotech did contact us once, so we were made aware of this process was taking place by Shamrock, um, and we decided that, it, in my opinion, I thought it would be a good uh, good process to follow through, as Bruce said, and and to uh, benefit. It 
would be of benefit to us. Um, there's a description of the monitoring wells, uh, the different paperwork that they have to do, but the majority of their work will be with the Department of Natural Resources um, and, and their tracking thereof. It'll be similar to um, some of the other projects that we've done in the past. The goal, is, as Bruce mentioned, is to get the certificate of completion, um, which is similar to a no further action letter. Uh, which oftentimes is used by lenders and buyers is to, to purchase the, uh, on their purchase contracts. Um, also, this may open some other additional funds for us to be able to utilize for um, some additional demolition if we decided to go that route. Uh, the professional services fee is uh, est est estimated to be $9,300. Uh, there's also additional fees that, that the DNR will charge. Um, and then there's a long-term steward stewardship fee of $15,000. Uh, these fees will be covered through the, our budget. Um, it's already set in place, and staff recommends the council proceed with reading by title only and passage of the attached resolution, authorizing the city manager to execute a proposal with Geotech Incorporated. So what I'm hearing is, and I, I, I did read through this um, for tonight, once we get that certificate, let's say somebody purchases, they should be okay as far as needing to clean up anything, this DNR and stuff would be. That's our understanding. Everything is current. They've not identified any issues. Now, there are still buildings that are sitting there that may need some asbestos removal and so on, and we're looking into that right now. And, and uh, uh, so that would be an issue. But as far as the ground site itself, they've already monitored it and determined that it's clean. We just need to finish the certification process so we have that paper that says, here it is, that it is. <laughs> So these fees cover for future, like the buildings coming down, them inspecting them and doing that stuff? Um, there will be additional fees with the buildings yeah. and so on to deal with those. Okay. What's hydrated bin night chips? Hydrated bin night chips. Kenzie. What you, <laughs> okay. Ben, ben night is a clay that's used uh, when it's hydrated, it's essentially dried out. So it'll expand, I suppose. Okay. Pleasure okay. the board. Move that we read bill number 2021-43, a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a proposal for Geotechnology Incorporated, complete the Missouri Department of Natural Resources Brownfield Voluntary Cleanup Program at 600 Green Boulevard. I move for passage of uh, Bill Number. Second, 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 second reading. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm ready. Can you read now, please? Yes. <laughs> Bill number 2021-43, a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a proposal from Geotechnology Incorporated, complete the Missouri Department Natural Resources Brownfield Voluntary Cleanup Program at 600 Green Boulevard. Move for passage of Bill number 2021-43. I apologize. I did not take roll. Right. I did not. Time. I know. Y'all just want me. Y'all just like me to read this. Okay. So I'm going to take roll. <laughs> Shivers. Yes. William. Yes. Miller. Yes. Hay. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Okay. This time for real, right? Yes. The third reading of it. <laughs> Bill number 21, 2021-43. A resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a proposal for Geotechnology Incorporated, complete the Missouri Department of Natural Resources Brownfield Voluntary Cleanup Program at 600 Green Boulevard. I move for passage. So go to point Shivers. Yes. Williams. Yes. Miller. Yes. Yes. Bill number 2021-44, resolution authorizes the city manager to execute a memorandum and understanding with the Mobile Area Community College for the Mexico Animal Shelter. Mr. Slagle. Yes, the uh, Mobile Area Community College at the Mexico campus is starting a veterinary tech program. And what they would like to do and have proposed to do is to do uh, well animal health care for us at the animal shelter at no cost. And uh, so this is certainly a benefit to us uh, from a cost point of view, but as well as for the animals as well. So cover the details of the contract, Rita Jacks. <coughs> As stated, uh, the Mexico Area Community College, MACC, 
um, they have established a veterinary uh, technology program and they have reached out to the Mexico Animal Shelter to partnership with them to provide um, preventive health care to the uh, animals at the animal shelter which is something that we currently we do do some but we don't have it on a daily basis which would provide um, a great benefit to the animal shelter uh, as far as the preventive uh, health care is concerned. Uh, staff feels that this partnership uh, will be um, present a substantial saving to the city and to also give us the opportunity to have uh, technicians at the shelter, you know, on, for to actually look at our animals and see that grooming them, whether it's dentary, uh, preventive blood work, just to keep us from, you know, losing some of the animals that we do um, based on not getting the care that they need. We do have um, Stephanie Gillum here from MACC with us this evening. Uh, she's going to actually go over the program and the partnership uh, with you all. And staff recommends that council proceed with reading by title only and passage of the attached resolution. Good evening. Um, I'm Stephanie. I'm the director of the new veterinary technology program at MACC, and I'm a registered veterinary technologist. Um, we are super excited to be starting this program in the area. There are no veterinary technician training programs in Mid-Missouri, so there is a huge shortage of qualified veterinary technicians. Um, we have overwhelming support from our state veterinary medical association and from all of the area veterinarians. So this will be a two-year associate of applied science degree. Um, we have applied for accreditation from the American Veterinary Medical Association, or the AVMA. And the AVMA kind of regulates um, what we need to teach during these two years. One thing that we have to do is complete um, what the AVMA calls their essential skills list. So skills that every veterinary technician should be proficient at upon graduation. Um, and so these um, this health care that we have stated that we can provide to the animals at the shelter not only will be great because we can provide that care to the animals at no cost, but it will also give our students the experience that they need prior to graduation. Um, we are remodeling our um, part of our building here in Mexico. We're basically building a veterinary clinic. Um, we have hired a full-time veterinarian. She just started a couple weeks ago. She's on vacation or she would be here with me. Um, and we are also building a small loafing shed type pole barn and like corral space behind the building. We have a partnership with Science Stricker Genetics, so we'll be taking our students there for their large animal work. Um, but our thought is that we could bring dogs and cats from the shelter to our clinic there at MACC and provide health care such as spays and neuters, dental cleanings, vaccines, preventative, you know, blood work, heartworm test, and those sorts of things. Cool. You are going to really spay and neuter? Yes. Okay. Now, if I understood your numbers, you and, I mean, to begin with, you anticipated, what was it, 10 or 12 students, and you far exceeded that already when you are signing up for the fall semester? Correct. We just accepted our first class that will start in August, and we have 18 students for the first class. So and we're pulling students from... We have students from here, Columbia, Jeff City, Kirksville, Hannibal, Moberly. So they're coming from all over Mid Missouri. So you guys will take over taking care of all the spading and neutering at the shelter? I don't know about all of it. Um, as part of the MOU, I wrote in there that at the beginning of every semester, we would provide a schedule of how many animals we can do per week. Um, so it'll depend upon um, how many students we have in our class as to how many procedures we can do per week. Um, right now, I'm estimating that we'll probably be able to do two to three spays and neuters a week. Um, the surgeries will be performed in the spring semesters. Um, in the fall semesters, that's where we're just teaching the preventative health care, like the blood work and the vaccines and things like that. And then we won't be providing any care in the summer because the students will actually be out at internships at local vet clinics during the summer. Okay. Other questions? I move uh, for reading of bill number 2021-44. Second. 
Hubert? Yes. Williams? Yes. Mills? Yes. Okay. Yes. Frick? Yes. Next item is the payment of the claims. Make a motion to pay bills. We're all good to up earlier, so we're all such a confused <laughs> Okay. It's summer. Bill number 2021-44, resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a memorandum of understanding with the Moberly Area Community College for the Mexico Animal Shelter. Uh, I move for approval. Second. Second. Wait a minute. Ship. Did I do that right? Passage. Passage. Yeah, Passage. Shivers? Yes. Williams? Yes. Miller? Yes. Hay? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Okay. Now we're ready for payment of the claims. <laughs> Make a motion. <laughs> you pay out second? Okay. Shivers? Yes. Williams? Yes. Miller? Yes. Hay? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Next item is comments from the council. Mr. Hay. Uh, good to see that uh, the pool's being used. A lot of I, uh, I get to uh, teach some lifeguards in the summer. Not, I'm not teaching them life saving, but uh, I get to teach them, and they were telling me about the lines that are waiting out there. So that's good. We're glad that the community likes it. And Miss Missouri starts this week, so hopefully people get out there and enjoy that. So, um, and I like the warm weather, so yeah. I think you're next. Um, yeah, I go out and support Miss Missouri this week in the pool. I can't say enough. I keep getting all kinds of awesome comments and in the wild part, and I will tell people because they come to my restaurant, um, we do draw people from out of town from this thing, for sure. Because uh, I've had several of them come through, and they're like, ah, and I'm like, where are you from? Because I don't recognize them, and they're like, Columbia. I've had somebody from Columbia, Fulton, Vandalia. I mean, so it's worked out really well. Well, um, we had a city team that played on the in the chamber tournament, and we actually did pretty well. And uh, one, we had a player join us who was uh, 86 years old, a female, and she was uh, a uh, Amy Bryan's mother from Iowa. So I played on a team with three Iowans, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we did okay, and it was fun. Uh, another thing. Um, Chad, um, I, I saw some a comment on on Facebook uh, that people talking about the eutrophication of the of the lakes, you know, mm -hmm. and we might put out. A, I almost thought about responding to it, but we might put a notice out about that and what's causing it, why it's so difficult to control. That's the algae growth on the lakes. So. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we come around to deal with that. On I, it it's happens every summer, and yeah, it's, it's going to get warmer, warmer right? Uh, so. Uh, Oh, that, just a, either maybe something on the city Facebook page or a Rex and Parks and Rec page or whatever. Okay. Shivers. I'm not going to agree with Steve that it's he's enjoying this warm weather, so I am not. But um, you know, it really is great seeing how wonderful. So cheers again to Parks and Rec, Brooks, Chad, everybody. Um, for our pool and what that's bringing to our aquatic center and what it's bringing to our city. Um, there are some Juneteenth events going on this weekend and um, just reminding people to stay hydrated because it's hot out there. Mr. Slagle. Yes, it's already been mentioned, of course, Miss uh, Missouri Week, Juneteenth activities this weekend, car show, I think there's two of them. So there will be a lot of activities in town this weekend to uh, to partake in. So um, should also have a lot of visitors also. So help them out if you need to. Well, ditto on everything else. You've hit it all. Pools, car shows, Miss Missouri, and you've done a fine job. Tell everybody. At this time, it's public comments. If you'd like to make a public comment, please come to the podium, state your name and address, and you have about three minutes to make your comment. Hello. Hello. I am Tiffany Watson. Uh, address is 2810 Green Ridge Court. Um, I am the reason um, that uh, Bill 41 or 20, yeah, 2021 41 was brought to your attention. Um, I have lived in Mexico my entire life. I, I mean, I work here, I raise my kids here, and um, I think that you guys should be aware of how some of your city employees are treating people. 
Um, so on April 22nd, um, uh, Gary, the city inspector, came to my house and said that one of my neighbors had complained because we got, I'm just going to call it a storage container, since that's what is in uh, your ordinances now that you've passed it. Um, so a storage container for a shed. Um, and so he took a look at it and told my husband that we needed to get a permit for that. So we went up and got a permit and said it's an accessory building, we're good to go, and cool, we're great. Um, on May 12th, we got a letter saying that we were in violation of Ordinance 42-1, um, saying that it was not an accessory building. Um, I didn't agree, um, but I requested that I be shown an ordinance saying they were calling it an enclosed trailer. Um, so I requested th for them to show me an ordinance saying that I could not have my enclosed trailer on my property. And they said they would get back to me. And so five days later, they wrote a letter. Um, it was a notice of violation. It wasn't just a letter this time. And it was still stating that we were in violation of 42-1, which I just want to make everyone aware. 42-1 is a list of definitions. They were telling me that I was violating a list of definitions. And saying that my enclosed trailer was to be removed from my property by June 7th, or this would be forwarded to the prosecutor. I came up here and I talked to Gary and I talked to Rita and I literally begged them to show me an ordinance that said that I could not have what they were calling an enclosed trailer on my property and no one gave me an ordinance showing me that I couldn't have this. My husband spoke with Mr. Slagle and he told him that just because my husband could not accept no for an answer did that not mean that that was we were going to cause issues for the city. We're not causing issues for the city. We have every right to know what is going on. Like if we're breaking, if we're violating an ordinance, we have every right to know what ordinance we're violating and no one showed us that. And I would like to know if you guys think that it is okay that the city employees treat people like that. Well, we're, we're not certain what happened here. I, mean, I have recordings. Well, I understand. Um, we'll check into it and see what we know about it. I mean, is that, that, that's the only thing that I'm going to get from that. I can't make a decision for the council or the city sure. sitting here. Sure. Based on... So what are the steps that we take going forward, that you guys take going forward? Because now that this has passed, you guys have passed the, the 41. Um, I mean, I shouldn't have any issues. I already have the what you guys are going to continue or consider a storage unit now. So, I mean, I already have it, so they can't do anything about that. <laughs> Just everybody else that wants it can't have it. Um, but I would like to know what is going to be done about that. Um, I just want also, I want to make sure that everybody knows Gary has was very, very kind during all of this. He, I, he should not get in trouble for anything. I think that he has other people pushing him to do this. I mean, he issued us the permit to begin with, and then he had other people telling him to um, void that, which I also want to mention is actually violating a city ordinance in itself because city ordinance 42-143 states that how you can, um, like the, the city inspector, the building inspector, can void a permit. Um, it states, quote, the administrating officer may revoke a permit or approval issued under the provisions of this division in case there has been any false statement or misrepresentation as to a material fact in the application or plans on which the permit approval was based. We did not make any false statement. We did not misrepresent anything. He literally came out and looked at the building before he issued us the permit. And then he had people behind him, higher up than him, telling him to void it out. Do you guys think that it's okay that they threatened us to send us to the prosecutor even though they had no violation on us? I can't answer that from here. We're not into that. We I mean, planning and zoning brought us a bill to look at because they wanted to change, they wanted to define the ordinance as to what a 
out building was mm -hmm. and that's what we approved tonight your particular case we're not necessarily privy to sure sure and absolutely i mean i was planning on coming here even before i knew that i thought it was kind of funny that this was coming up tonight perfect timing great that they brought this to you guys um I, like i said i was planning on coming here anyway but so i mean i'm not gonna get a yes this is acceptable or no this is not acceptable yeah. that we're treating our citizens of our town well, we like don't this. intend to treat our citizens badly but we cannot give you a yes or no answer on your situation from sitting up here based upon what based on what saying. i just said You're that right. that they said that i was violating an ordinance that is literally a, le a list of definitions i cannot say what these people said based upon what you said that's he said she said like i said i have recordings that i would be happy to let you listen to well, that would not be our job at this time. That would need to go to planning and zoning. Gotcha. So can you tell me if anything is going to happen about this? Do you think for us to do? Well, obviously he's not going to say anything for us to do because he's part of the problem. Like, I'm sorry that I'm sure that that's rude, but I'm pretty sick of it. Uh -huh. Your Honor, they were given options and they were allowed to go to the Board of Adjustments if they felt that we misinterpreted something. Mm -hmm. They chose not to. Okay. And so if they felt there was a misinterpretation, there was an appeal process that was identified for them. The permit, yes, was voided and that permit was never paid for. Okay. And I, I don't that's also know that wrong, I should that's fine. continue to debate the issue because there are there's an appeal process that should be followed first. Okay. Yeah. So the appeal process of paying $150 and they can either tell you yes or no, but I didn't have anything to appeal and I also explained that to them. They told me that I could not have it on my property because I was violating 42-1, which like I said is literally a list of definitions. I can't violate a definition. I also have a playset in my backyard that is not considered an accessory building according to 42-1. As I say, we cannot issue an opinion based upon exactly what you said tonight. We appreciate you speaking. We'll, uh, we hope that uh, our staff does a proper job. According to you, they did not. But uh, um, yeah, I would suggest you follow the appeal procedure. And thank you. No need, thank you. Okay. Anyone else want to come to the podium? If you would like to, please state your name and address and try to hold your comments to three minutes. Anybody else? My name is Will Johnson. I uh, live at 1315 Rosebud Street, Mexico, Missouri, and I also own one of the businesses here in town. So, I had a shipping container just like this. It was deemed an accessory building, while theirs is deemed an enclosed trailer. So is that a consistent thing for the city to do, is make different determinations? And then I have the question, you as individuals, do you find this acceptable? This is now about the moral aspect of this and the ethical aspect. Anyone wish to can't care to answer? I, I don't know. You guys want us to answer questions based on your interpretation of what you have said. And I understand oh. you say you have recordings, but you can't, I mean, you want us to what? Say, you did wrong, even though we have no idea what was actually said. Do you have something in writing that says it was an enclosed Yeah, they, there's the city letters, and I've seen copies of them. And this is just their one situation. I just right. happen to apply it to mine because the identical issue came up. How long have you had your trailer? Mine? Over a year. Okay. It was sitting on a property right there in the commercial district. You know, and I just happened to be following you guys along in this conversation in 42... Mm -hmm. oh, let's take a look here. Bill number 2021-41. Okay. So 600 square feet or anything bigger than the, than the current living space. And I want to ask a question real quick. Miss Jackson, what's the average I, or average square foot of a house in the city of Mexico? Just a moment. If we could have a little more. Mm -hmm. Your questions are addressed to us. the mayor, okay. council. I will be happy to. All right. Could any of you... And just a moment. Okay. He has an appeal pending with us on a business license, which I've been discussing with his attorney. Mm -hmm. I think we have that worked out. Okay. okay. So I'll ask the city council. No idea. No, no idea. Average, average year that the houses in Mexico were built 
in district? Rough guess. Just an estimation. I'm not going to guess on something that I have no knowledge okay. of. I mean, I know how big some houses are and how small some other ones are, but I can't tell you what the average is. Okay. I would say the average is reducing at this time because we have a lot of small houses being built, but I have no no numbers I can put to that. Okay. So most businesses start off in people's homes, but you guys just made a building that's illegal to have or to put up if it's any bigger than the domicile in front of it. How many garages and workshops, mechanics, people who start out in their home before they move to a big commercial area, start off in their homes? You just That just killed all those businesses right out the gate without them even starting. I understand what you're saying, but some of these, some of the neighbors of people are not happy to have some large industrial commercial building built in their property area because it may detract from the value of their property. We have to look at the whole picture. Of the whole picture isn't just a building on a piece of property. Mm -hmm. It's the value of the whole subdivision it's in. Okay. But, uh, okay. I understand your thoughts too, sir. Okay. Well, I, I find that understanding. And Ms. Briggs, Mr. Haig, I appreciate your guys' uh, questions about the shipping containers. At least you guys asked. But I find it very interesting that a no public hearing was held by the Zoning Commission, and then you guys took it and passed it whoa, 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 unanimously whoa, 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 whoa. That, was a, that was a public no, hearing. That was a public hearing. Ms. Jackson confirmed it wasn't open. No, she said it she was said a public it was. hearing. Oh. It was advertised. It was public. And public? Okay. You can come. We don't okay. have planning zonings that are ever closed. They're always open. We'll be happy right. to go to go back and take a look. Okay. Thank you. So, well, I'm, I'm not I'm not done yet. So, question on AP Green. You have three You're, minutes. You have three minutes. <coughs> yeah. Let's wrap it up quickly. Okay. AP Green. Mm hmm. Hmm. Where do we want to pick on this one? You guys are getting ready to invest another twenty-seven thousand, roughly, Mr. Cycle. Something like that. Give or take. I'm plus, plus them to start a brownfield phase two, correct? Would be the, the assessment of what you guys are finishing up there? We're monitoring the wells that pre that already exist. Just the wells? Mm -hmm. Nothing tested on the surface? Was there ever a study done on contamination at the surface or at multiple depths? I can't answer that, but I believe that that was what that was, was done by Shamrock, mm -hmm. and then they, the wells were to continue to test it, and we're picking up the testing on the wells until they're cleared. Who was the last owner of AP Green? Somebody would refresh Abacus. Me. Abacus? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did they get any sort of risk or hazard assessment prior to starting I development? I can't answer that. You can't answer that? Can anybody answer that? Mr. Slagle should be able to. No. Why should I be able to answer that? because it was a private transaction between Shamrock and Abacus. Didn't okay. have anything to do with us. But development in the city, new well, buildings would have to require a permit, correct? They didn't have new buildings. There's no new building. Or tearing one down would still require a permit. Yes. So a permit process would have been done, the due diligence would have been done. Correct. Why would you need a permit? Why would you need a land study to tear down a building? Because if I remember correctly, AB Green, AB Green dominantly used asbestos on that property. The buildings themselves had permits, and the buildings that had asbestos had to have the asbestos removed. What you're talking about is the land. Why would the land need How's a, a What is asbestos? It's in the building. I I don't know. And you're it's here finished to product. People, it's, but it is. What's it like in raw form? Does any, could anyone answer that for me? I, I we don't know the answer to these questions. I'm sorry. Okay. So uh, we're just trying to take that property and do the best we can for the city of Mexico okay. and for your your benefit as to you're a taxpayer. Okay. And by making sure that we can cover the nib bonds that need to be paid and figure out what we can do with the property in time to come. Okay. Well, as a taxpayer, I'd like to know what's my current taxpayer liability for that property. 
Is this three minutes up? I yes, it is. Done. I move for adjournment. Oh, he wants to just debate us. No, I just I just want information, really. And I, there's I'd like there's a whole city staff, sir, that you can ask that information to. We don't we're not privy to that. We don't ask. Our liability to it is was in the paper several times. It's a little over a million dollars. The city's liability on it. Okay. So, so we have to pay that over a number of years. And we thank you for your comments. You are well past your three minutes. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. I move for adjournment. A second. Shivers? Yes. Williams? Yes. Miller? Yes. Hay? Yes. Brig? Yes. 